Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> and I appreciate uh, both the chairman and both chairmen's uh, uh, advice on the motion to recommit. Uh, I'll take that up with my leadership. You never know. Maybe you'll get a chance to see it again. Uh, as far as the windfall elimination provision, the government pension offset, I would agree with Bermuda. We need to fix that. It's been years, and uh, I would be in favor of fixing that as well. Let me just ask you, Mr. Smith. I mean, you were you went through the the hearings on this bill, um, went through the markup. What Chairman Neal has referred to as the consternation that came from his side. Did you feel any on the 529 provision? Did you feel any of that welling up during the, the legislative hearing and the and the markup? No. When were you first aware of this? Two weeks ago, maybe. And how, how did it surface? What, what form did it take? There was just discussion uh, among members and the ranking member made us aware. I think it was communicated to him and he communicated to us. But at this point you had already done the markup on the, oh, yes. on the bill that's before us? And was there any attempt within the committee structure itself to resolve this issue before bringing it to the floor? I couldn't speak to that. Um, so not that I'm aware of. You didn't have any discussions. You, you or yourself, as, as, a, as, as a, a member of the committee, minority member of the committee. I'm um, side conversations with members, colleagues, is, is what took place. Yes, Mr. Neal? Thank you, Mr. Burgess. Mr. Brady and I spoke of this a number of times. I guess I'm just having trouble understanding why, at a date after, I mean, this was not new information. The 529 provision was added to the tax bill in December of 2017. If I recall correctly, that was an amendment by one of my senators when this bill was heard over on the Senate side and adding the 529 provision. It was a little bit dicey at that time, and I think yet the amendment, the Cruz amendment passed on a party line vote and may have required the participation of the vice president that night when Mr. Manchin decided not to vote for what he had originally committed to vote for. Um, but then that's the last I've heard of it. And to have it come up now with such vehemence that, I mean, Mr. Woodall, as I think put it in, in the, the, the clearest of terms, we have homeschool children, we have children with special needs, we're now saying we're excluding them from consideration on this. I, I, I must admit, I just, I don't, I frankly don't understand. So if someone is willing to share with me why the concern is there, why the consternation, um, I'd be happy to listen to, to that discussion. But right now it's, I mean, it's just a big mystery. It's, it's almost as if we want to take an anti-homeschool vote. We want to take an anti-special needs child's vote. Why would we want to do that? You shouldn't construe that that way, that this is anti-anybody. That is not our intention. And the idea that we would have targeted or picked somebody or some group out as we move forward on a very important piece of retirement legislation, that would not have been our intent, not even a consideration. Mr. Smith, can you help me at all understand this? I mean, I, I uh, certainly can't speak for the opponents to this, uh, the, this homeschooling provision, but I, I would hope that public policy uh, should you know, treat all children uh, the same. Uh, the, the needs are, are obviously there, whether it's, and the, the school supplies in, in different forms Different kids need for different reasons, and and I would hope that public policy uh, would reflect that. Well, I just have to say, when Senator Cruz offered this amendment in December of 2017, it was extremely popular back home. I have a large homeschool population in my district. Uh, the district that I represent also has a fair number of special needs children. One time we had the... Uh, a state school and as a consequence attracted a number of families in the area 
because of the services that that, uh, that campus could offer. And my hometown of Denton, Texas, just kind of has a reputation for that. And, and people come because of the expertise that the county has. I don't understand why we would uh, we would try to disadvantage those populations. Again, there was a there was a there was a lot of enthusiasm for what Senator Cruz was able to accomplish when he passed his amendment, and it was a big deal that night. It was a late night vote. The entire vice presidential <laughs> motorcade had to come up from the um, Naval Observatory. I mean, it was a big deal, but he got his amendment passed, and and people back home were. Uh, I think appropriately appreciative of Senator Cruz's effort to get that to get that amendment passed. So it's very disconcerting to me now to see at the eleventh hour on this bill, after it went through the committee process, that we've now decided that uh, you know, those populations aren't aren't worthy of our consideration. Not that there aren't other populations we should consider. That's been brought up and, and well expressed in this hearing. But I don't understand why we would why we would disadvantage those other populations.